Hola Unconventionals! We get a lot of questions about what it really costs to live in Ecuador. So today we're going to share all of our expenses from the month of September 2020. Before we get started, if you're new to our channel and you're thinking of visiting or moving to Ecuador, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell please, because we show what it's really like to live in Ecuador. All right, Amelia, let's get started. <laughs> okay. The first item on our monthly expense list is our rent. It's our biggest expense, probably most people's biggest expense. Yes. We pay $700 a month. However, that comes with the internet, which is 45 a month. So I guess rent technically is 655 a month and then 45 for the internet. We have a three bedroom, two bathroom condo about three blocks from the beach. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a really nice condo with stainless steel appliances and granite countertops and we really like it. We do really like it and the water pressure is great and we have lots of hot water yeah. and we have a backyard for the dogs. Yeah, we only run out of hot water when Amelia takes one of her long scalding hot showers. Yeah, I don't care if it's like a thousand degrees outside, I'm still, still taking a hot shower. Yeah, it's so hot I can't even touch the water. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. We didn't have a consistent hot water in Cuenca and I will never take that for granted yeah. ever again. Very thankful for the hot water and the high pressure. Yes. Okay, what's our next expense, JP? The next thing is our utilities. And we currently spend about $65 a month on that during the dark days where it's cooler, we're not running the air conditioner as much. During the high season when it was hotter, it was about $95 a month. Yeah, so still not terrible. Mm -hmm. We have, each room has its own air conditioner. They don't have the central air or central cooling like you're used to in other parts of the world, like mm -hmm. the United States. Yep. So we have more control over our costs that way. Yeah, so we mainly just run the air conditioner in our bedroom at night with the doors closed. But mm -hmm. sometimes when it was really hot, I ran it where I work at the dining room table. It blew right on me <laughs> to keep me cool with the fan above me because it can get pretty warm yes. during the high season. So speaking of utilities, our next expense is the water. Tap water is included in our rent. But we do have to buy drinking water or bottled water because mm -hmm. you cannot drink the tap water here on the coast. Yeah, the big five gallon jugs of yes. purified water. And our landscaper, he delivers those for us. Those cost $2 a piece. And we spent four, um, $14 on water jugs in the month of September. September. Mm -hmm. So really not that bad. No, it's not. We spent, I think, 16 bucks a month on water in Cuenca. So it's pretty similar. The next thing is propane. We actually did not get a propane refilled in September, but I put two bucks in there because I think they cost like, what do they cost, three bucks? I'm not sure. So I assumed like maybe two bucks worth of propane that we used. We, are, we don't use that much propane here. We replace the hot water propane tank in Cuenca every two weeks. Yeah. And here we've replaced it, what, twice? Twice. Since we've been here. And I'm not sure why that is. It could be that we're at lower altitude, so the water boils faster. That means right. the hot water heater doesn't have to work as hard. Also, it's warmer and there's a shorter distance for the hot water to travel to the shower here than there was in Cuenca. So all of those things combined might mean why we don't use as much pro propane here. Yeah, we're really surprised that we're saving a lot. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's the altitude, JP. Yeah, yeah, the altitude and the warmer temperatures. Because in Cuenca, we had plastic pipes in the house that ran throughout the house, like in the attic. and. You know, it's pretty chilly there, so mm -hmm. it, it used a lot of hot water just to heat the pipes. Yes. Okay. All right, next on the list is our food budget. Oh. So we start with the Mercado. <laughs> we love going to the Mercado. Our fruits and veggies are so affordable here. I think they're actually a little cheaper than they were in, in the Sierra. Yeah, we spent $41 in the whole month of September for the two of us on our fruits and vegetables. And that's quite a bit less than what we paid in Cuenca, but some of that is that at the Mercado in Cuenca, we also bought nuts and seeds and coffee right and all of our beans and stuff we bought that at the mercado mm -hmm. and and here we buy that at the grocery store all right so the next item is the grocery stores and we shopped in september we only shopped at tia in montanita mm -hmm. and we also went to mi comisariato in Vallenita, uh, which is by la libertad and we spent 254 dollars for the month of september on groceries and that's for things like toilet paper cleaning supplies uh, the biggest item probably is the almond milk that we yeah. buy and we and we buy coffee there coffee right? uh, that's the actually that's the biggest expense is the coffee well and we buy oats mm -hmm. we buy the whole rolled oats there yeah. canned canned stuff like canned sauces and mushrooms yeah like pasta sauce or and yeah we, yeah and we buy all of our beans and legumes yes. at the grocery store 
which it's all very affordable. Mm -hmm. The coffee, I think, is the most expensive because I think those are like $7 for a bag of coffee. Yeah. I think it's 10 for what we buy the sweetened coffee. Is are it? they? Seven or 10. It's, it's expensive, which is weird because considering Ecuador is known for growing good coffee. Well, I think it's because it is bagged and processed to be yeah. in the store. So when we were in Cuenca, we bought really good coffee that was like $3.50 from a local guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good coffee it too. Sure was. All right, our next expense, one of our biggest ones, is our health insurance. We spend $158 per month for both of us, mm -hmm. and that's for private insurance with Confia Med. We aren't on the public IESS plan, but we're considering signing up for me for my spine in case I have to have another surgery at some point in the future, because it's uh, the out-of-pocket maximum or minimum. There's limited coverage <laughs> with the private insurance after the two-year right. waiting period, which is up, I think, in another six months. So uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do about that. The IESS, you can plan to pay anywhere from like 50 to 100 bucks a month, depending on your age. Yeah, I, it's definitely something we want to investigate as we mm -hmm. continue to age here. Yeah. Because I think it's important. Mm -hmm. And we've heard good things about it, especially here on the coast. People have shared really positive experiences with the IESS. Yeah. And if you need to get in touch with an insurance broker, the man we featured in our previous video, Mario Miranda, recently passed away. We're, we're just still in shock I and know. really saddened by that. He was such a nice man. We really liked getting to know him. His son, Maurice, and, his, uh, and Maurice's uncle, Fernando, have taken over Mario's clients. They both speak English. They'll, they will help you set up doctor's appointments, file your claims, uh, they'll handle all that stuff for you. So we'll put the contact info for that in the blog post for this. Speaking of that, we have a massive blog post oh, for yeah. this for this uh, <laughs> video. It's like almost 5,000 words long. It's got all of the, this information plus a whole bunch more, and it compares our cost of living here on the coast to our cost of living in the mountains in Cuenca. So yeah. go check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description below so you can go read all of this stuff. We also talk about like cost of appliances and electronics and that kind of thing in the blog post. So it's got even more information. Yeah, JP did a very deep dive into that. Yeah. He's very detail oriented. I am, if you didn't know that already. <laughs> if it was me, it would have been like a hundred words. Two words. <laughs> it's less. Amelia says, why well, say in 10 words, but you can say in one word. <laughs> That's her motto. <laughs> when I'm typing, not when I'm speaking. <laughs> Anyway. All right, the next item is our Claro phone bill. That's our mobile phone bill. Mm -hmm. It was 17 when we first signed up in 2017 when we moved here, and now it's 21. I'm not exactly sure why it's more. I don't know either, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. We are really happy with mm -hmm. it. We've had to use it as a mobile hotspot on multiple occasions when we're out traveling, and it's come through for us. So the last thing in our non-discretionary expenses, the things that we can't live without, at least we think we can't, is uh, transportation. And we spent more in September. We spent 71. Mm -hmm. 45 of that was to go to La Libertad to do some banking and go to Mi Comisariato. And we also filmed a video while we were there. I'll put a link to that video above Amelia's head in case you want to see it. So we spent 45 on that. Our driver, Stalim, drove us there, drove us around La Libertad and Bayanita right. and waited for us while we filmed and then drove us back. 45, he was with us for like five hours. Yeah. So he's a super safe driver. We have his contact info if you need it. So drop us a note through our contact form and we will put you in touch if you need a great driver in this area. All right, so now we're gonna share our discretionary expenses with you all. And our number one expense is restaurants. We like to eat out. As much as we like to go buy our delicious fruits and vegetables and cook, we like to eat out. Mm -hmm. I guess we just eat a lot. We do eat quite a bit actually. <laughs> so we spent $193 eating out nine times in September. So we eat about, out about twice a week, I mm -hmm. guess, on average. Not too bad. But $193, I think that averages out to about $21. And for and mainly they were dinners. I think we ate out lunch one time. So $21 for two people for dinner. That's pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our next one of our next biggest expenses is the wine budget. <laughs> so the wine... <laughs> We, we like wine. We've, we're honest about that. We've yeah. talked about it before. So you can expect to pay about 8 to $12 for a really good bottle of like Argentinian mm -hmm. or Chilean wine. Yep. It's really not that much different than the U.S. So we 
spend about the same here that we did in the U.S. on wine per month. However, if you want to have a bottle of wine or when you're out at dinner, it's a lot cheaper here than it mm -hmm. is in the United States because they just don't have the ginormous markup mm -hmm. on alcohol here. I think a bottle of wine costs about fifteen dollars yeah. if you want out to drink a bottle of wine out, or if, um, if you want a glass of wine, I think it's like four to five dollars. Yeah, usually four to five. And those big bottles of Club Verde, those are a buck seventy-five mm -hmm. at the liquor store, and they usually they're like three bucks at a restaurant. And then the Pilsner, those are cheaper. Those are a buck fifty yeah. at the at the um, liquor store. And we don't really know about hard alcohol because we rarely drink anything like that. Yeah. I know, JP, you had margarita the other day. Do you know how much that cost? I think those are five or six bucks. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. Thanks for putting me on the spot, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we also have Netflix here. That's um, 15 or $13 a month, I think. We had a, our entertainment expenses were Netflix and a beach chair for five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so you can rent one of those beach umbrellas on the beach with two chairs mm -hmm. for five dollars for the whole day. Right. Yeah, it's a smoking deal. So we did that one day before we had our own beach chairs. Spanish lessons. Amelia takes Spanish lessons with Christina, still in Cuenca. They do it over what Skype now? It's Zoom. Zoom. Oh, they do Zoom Spanish. Yes. It's Christina with walking Spanish lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's so much fun. About fifty dollars a month. We spent 20 bucks on translation services with Gabby Lazaro. She went to the JEP with us in La Libertad and helped us do some banking, to yeah. set up our online banking. Yes, thank you, Gabby. So we normally wouldn't have that expense. In fact, that's the first time we've paid a translator, I think, since we've been in Ecuador. Usually we can muddle through pretty well on our own, but mm -hmm. that was a little confusing. Yeah. And Amelia spends $80 on yoga per month, yes. and that's for a private lesson. Most of the time it's on the beach, weather permitting. Otherwise, Jose comes here to our house mm -hmm. and does yoga classes here. It's amazing that, to get private lessons on the beach. I know, for I know. basically 80 bucks a month. I feel very spoiled. <laughs> it is incredible. Yeah. Our next expense is the marital aid, and that is Yasmina, the housekeeper. <laughs> Like marital aid. <laughs> the marital aid. That is a massive marital aid. <laughs> yeah. So or we, not that she is. Yeah, Excuse she me. is. <laughs> yeah, well, her cleaning is a her, is the yes, marital aid. Her so services. She, she comes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So on Monday and Wednesday, she comes for an hour and cleans up the kitchen for us. Since we don't have a dishwasher, she just cleans the whole kitchen, washes the dishes, does some sweeping and stuff for about an hour on Monday and Wednesday. Then on Friday, she comes for three hours and cleans the whole place. We pay her five bucks an hour. So we, she didn't come twice in September, but normally it's like a hundred bucks a month that we pay for her. And that is worth, she is worth every penny mm -hmm. because like JP said, you know, we do cook and we're, but we're busy. We work a lot and stuff just kind of piles up and then I can't stand it because then I see this pile of dishes and yeah. then the next time I want to go cook something, I have to stop and clean. Yeah. <laughs> And then I might get a little angry if he hasn't been doing his shit. Yeah, because I work I work at my computer. In fact, Yasmina jokes with me about how I'm always working because sometimes I never even get out of my chair the whole time she's there. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> JP gets tunnel vision. I get in the zone. Yes, you do. Okay, anyway. Okay, the last expense that we have that is kind of discretionary, but maybe not, is our traveling mailbox. That's our U.S.-based address in Aurora, Colorado that we use for our jobs, our clients, our banking, taxes, and mm -hmm. we pay 20 bucks a month to have a physical address and they, all of our mail from the U.S. goes there. They open it, scan it, and we log into the website and look at it and we can say we need it forwarded or delete it, shred it, whatever. So that's that. That's got the hiccups. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I, I know. That's why I got very quiet all of a sudden. Yeah, I could tell. <laughs> that didn't seem like a lot. Yeah, so our total... Uh, dis non-discretionary expenses are thirteen twenty-five a month, and our total discretionary expenses are five fifty-six per month, or at least in September, for a total of eighteen eighty-one, which is pretty much the same as it was in Cuenca. Yeah. So we could definitely cut out several hundred a month if we absolutely had to. We could. So for basically for two people, we're living very comfortably, a very very comfortable middle class lifestyle here mm -hmm. in Ecuador by the beach for less than two thousand a month. For a couple, yes, that's a heck of a deal. Incredibly, yeah, we were spending six thousand a month in Denver to live in a one-bedroom postage stamp apartment with one bathroom, 
Okay, I still can't believe that. I know. That, that cost us Our that rent much. was $1,800 just for the apartment. Just, yeah, and we had to pay f extra for the parking and the utilities and the internet and everything was like three or four times more expensive. Well, wasn't the internet over 100 bucks? It was $120. And it wasn't as good as it is here. It wasn't. It wasn't as good, reliable, or as fast as what we have here. We have fiber to the curb here mm -hmm. with Net NetLife, and it, we get 75 meg up and down. It's great service, and we have new routers and a yeah. booster, so it's, we're really happy we're with it. We're very happy. All right, guys, I think that's all we have for this video. Boy, this was a lot of work <laughs> to put all this together, including the blog post, so hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, leave us a thumbs up, please. Yes, please. We hope you have an unconventional day, and we will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.